Thank you, Nassim. So I will present uh, Eulerian state estimation, and it's a common work with uh, Thomas Lemezo, who is doing a PhD uh, in Brest, and Benoît Zed. So first, I will have to explain what means uh, what we mean by Eulerian. So it's a classification that has been uh, proposed uh, by Mitchell to, to represent two types of method. So one which which is Lagrangian and the other one which is Eulerian, and it comes from uh, fluid mechanics. So in, uh, when you see the flags, the flags represent so, uh, the vector field, which is uh, represented here, correspond to the wind. And if we want to, make, to understand the behavior of the wind, <coughs> we have two types of approach. The flag approach, so uh, the Eulerian approach, where just if you look at the flag, you are able to understand how the wind behaves. And also, you have the leaves. If you follow the leaves, then you will move with the leaves, and it corresponds to uh, the Lagrangian approach. OK, so one move, move, so the one you move with the fluid. And classically, when we deal with interval analysis method, we have a Lagrangian approach. It means that you integrate differential equations. And time is an important component of this. So here we will take a Eulerian approach, and I, I will uh, consider the following problem. I have a state equation here, presented the evolution of a trajectory. And I have to visit some sets. So the xi, xi here correspond to some sets that has to be visited. And uh, there is some kind of order. It means that, for instance, if uh, uh, some set have to be uh, x i has to be visited before x uh, j, in this case, you, you have this contract. So there is some kind of order between the sets that are visited. Uh, from this relation, I am able to find an approximation of the trajectory. So it is what we call a Lagrange uh, Eulerian approach because I don't know, I don't care about exact time. Everything is related to the basic tool for this is the invariant set, so which is important in control theory. So what is an invariant set? First, I introduce the flow map, which corresponds to a solution of the differential equation. So it means that uh, if I start at x0, if I take time t, then I have <coughs> phi will give me the state where I am at time t. OK. So what is an invariant set? So it's not uh, so, uh, so difficult to understand. If I have a, a set A like this, I will say that it is invariant if for all initial conditions inside this set, I will stay here forever. Okay. It means that this situation never happens. Otherwise, it is not an invariance. So it means, if you want, geometrically, that the vector field corresponding to the state equation always enters in this. OK, I have never this, never. So if A is an invariant set, and if B is an invariant set, the intersection A and B is also an invariant set. A in B will also be an invariant set, positive invariant, if A and B are positive invariant. So it means that there is some kind of lattice structure. So if I have a set, any kind of set like this, the notion of largest invariant set included in the red set exists, and the smallest invariant set containing the red set also exists. These notions exist. And what uh, the basic tool is from a set, let's say uh, x, there is some interval tools to compute an inner and an outer approximation of this set, which is called invariant plus of a the small, the largest invariant set included in X. Okay, so I, I will uh, come back here. 
So I define this set as the <coughs> largest positive invariant set which is included in X. And I will not explain it here too, too much, but we, can, we are able to compute an inner and an outer approximation of the, this set uh, using a tool which is called MACES. So maybe I will have some uh, time to, to discuss about this. Uh, so um, what about, uh, I will take an example, the Van der Poel system, which is a two-dimensional problem. And you can see here a geometrical representation with a vector field of this system. So we can see that if you are on the, uh, just uh, above the, the figure, then you will go out of the box. So if I take this box as a set X, then here I have an approximation <coughs> of the largest positive invariant set of this box X. So X is a box. Here, in gray, you have some approximation of the cone representing uh, the uncertainty of the vector field. So I will try to, to zoom. So control plus. OK. So you can understand, if I zoom here, on the blue area, when I am on the blue area, if I follow the vector field, I will go out of the initial vector. If I am in, if I am in the magenta, I will stay in the magenta forever, and the yellow correspond to the uncertainty layer. Okay. So this can be computed quite easy, quite uh, fast in, uh, let's say, one second. OK. So now I can define the largest negative environment set. And for this, I took from the positive invariant just by replacing f by minus f. So it means that uh, I consider the trajectory on the back to our own. This corresponds to the largest negative invariant set related to the von der Poel system. It means that if I, uh, if I am in the magenta zone, I will stay. So the magenta plus zone, I will stay, I will never go to the blue area. If I am in the uh, blue area, I will one day uh, leave the box X if I follow the vector field backward. Okay, so I have an, uh, an outer approximation of this one. Okay. So now I can define also the intersection of the positive invariant and the negative invariant, and it corresponds to all invariant set. It is uh, limit cycles and uh, equilibrium point, and so on. Okay. Um, what I want to say here is, as uh, we saw some talk about the forward, uh, forward uh, rich set, and it corresponds to the future, uh, all the future of. Uh, a set X. Um, to compute the forward rich set can be also uh, be written in terms of positive invariant set. So what I want to express here is that many problems uh, many problems in control theory can be expressed in terms of positive invariant set. So that's why we use it as a basic, basic uh, uh, stop. So I have an illustration of uh, the uh, forward which set, if I, if I take as X the box which is contained here red, okay, this box, then all trajectory starting in X will stay inside this set. So you can see here the limit cycle of the van der Poel system, but also you have an inner and also an outer approximation. So if I start here, I will never go to the blue zone. Never. Okay. If I take a point here in the magenta area, there exists at least an initial condition that will go to this point. Okay. So I can also consider the backward which set and so on. Uh, okay. So it means in this representation of the Van der Poel system that if I start 
in the Magian Carrier, one day I <coughs> get the set X. Uh, I will not spend too much uh, uh, on how we compute this, uh, for, uh, this uh, for, uh, forward read set or invariant set, but everything is related to mazes. So we do not integrate differential equation using a Picard uh, fixed point operator. It's more geometrical. So the, the idea is to represent path, to enclose path, in some kind of structure, which is a mixture of graphs and polygons and that we call maze. So a path, a path like this one, belongs to a structure that may be represented in the computer with neighbors and so on, uh, which uh, represent a set of paths. So we can see that this path belongs to this structure in the sense that it respects the Arrows. Okay. But it is not this one we take. We take something more sophisticated with doors and not graph at all. So doors is represented here. So it is what we represent in the computer. We have polygons, we have doors. It means that the path, which is consistent with the maze, uh, uh, will go from one box to another, respecting the doors. So they open like this. Okay. There is an order. So they, this path belongs to this maze because it goes from one box to another following the doors. Okay? If we have this structure, it can be seen as a set. It is a set of paths, but it is our intervals here. It means that if we have this structure, we can intersect, make the union, and so on. We have uh, some kind of uh, order relation, which means that this maze is included in this maze. This maze has more path than this one. Okay, and from this, we are able to represent some, uh, to, to have some kind of pro propagation, and I will explain how we are able to contract doors and polygons in this figure. So a vector field, which is uncertain inside the box, is represented, as we saw before, by a code, that's why we saw we saw many cones before on each box. Uh, from this code, I am able to contract the polygon as represented here. And from uh, also uh, this vector field, I am able to contract this door, which is represented here, as follows. OK, so I contract everything I can up to the fixed point. And if I propagate this one, I am able to compute points that will uh, have an evolution that will reach uh, the, a, a given box or a given set as follows. So at each step, I am able to prove by propagation basis that for each point here, I will reach the initial red box. Okay. So it is the inner approximation represented in this figure, but also I may have another approximation, an outer approximation, using the same type of technique, but uh, I, will, uh, uh, I will have to reach the fixed point in order to conclude that every point in the yellow area will never go to the red box. So this is more related to technique coming from abstract interpretation where they go up to the fixed point before concluding. Okay, so let me come back to the Eulerian filter. Uh, I have sets in uh, X0, X1, and so on, and I have to visit all these sets. So I will, uh, uh, I will define some kind of filter without taking directly time into account on its order. And uh, I propose the following formula, which tells me that if I define as z forward the set of all states uh, that are inside the visit set scale, okay, and uh, that have visited before all previous sets, 
then I can compute the following one, saying that it is belongs to the forward of the previous set, but also the intersection is xk plus 1, which is a recursive formula, which will make me possible to compute what I call an Eulerian filter. So I have a representation here. I have some, first I have some evolution, some trajectory. So this trajectory, visit xk minus 1, xk plus 1, but not xk or maybe later. So I do not respect the order, so this trajectory is not good. Okay. Uh, the trajectory D is good. The trajectory F is not good because it is on the wrong sense. The trajectory C is also good and so on. Okay, you understand which one has a good one. So the idea is assume that I know that all points here that are inside XK, the visit set XK, I visited before, xk minus 1, xk minus 2, and so on. I assume that I am here. So what about it? What when I, how I, I have to find a recursive formula, and now I try to think what could happen here. First, I will compute the forward of this set. If I compute the forward, it corresponds to the forward. I will intersect with xk plus 1, and now I have all states that I visited x0, x1, up to xk. Okay, and this is exactly the formula that is written here. So it corresponds to a filter, to the Eulerian filter, and I can do the same in a backward direction, and it will correspond to the Eulerian smoother. So if I control theory, we have the the filter, which is Gaussian, respective time, and uh, the, the smoother, take, uh, which is non Gaussian. Okay. So the non Gaussian, I will explain, but I'll give you first the formula. In the backward direction, I have uh, the smoother that gives me uh, I, uh, k, the backward of uh, what I have obtained, I take k plus 1, and I intersect with. Uh, the, the format. So I, I explain you now directly on the on the figure. So I remember I was here at time k plus one, but because of the future, it's not represented here. I assume that I know that I cannot be here. I am on the blue. So how can I propagate this information backward? So first I have to compute the backward which set corresponding to the blue, and to intersect with this one. And I will obtain the blue here, and it is exactly what corresponds to the formula I have explained before. Okay, now what I want is not that I have an k, k plus one, but I want the whole trajectory. So the trajectory, I take only the forward of z0 and the backward of L, taking that part because I take all information into account, and then doing this, I will obtain the two represented here. But uh, so it corresponds to the formula. But you can see here that the time is not taken into account. I have an inner and an approximation in the state space, but I don't see because I am in an Eulerian approach. I don't see, uh, uh, I, I have no information about that, but it is not what I want in this kind of approach. So I will illustrate here on a simple example which corresponds to uh, the Van der Poel system uh, represented here. Uh, so I take uh, three sets, x0, x1, x2, corresponding to three boxes A, B, and C. So, a, B, and C are correspond to the red boxes. So I try to find all trajectories that start in A, that finish in C, or maybe not in C, uh, finish in C, and they will visit B. So you can see that it, even back then it's not so easy because you have some trajectory that starts here, that go to B, that will avoid C at the first round, but later they will come back to C. 
Okay. For all points that are in the magenta area, there is some trajectory that are feasible, starting from A and going to C. So I have an inner and an outer approximation. I know that no trajectory, feasible trajectory, will be on the, uh, uh, on the blue area. This is guaranteed with respect to all uncertainty. And inside, I don't use anything related to pick operator. So it's not can be considered as nothing to do with uh, different than the Lagrangian approach. It's more geometrical. Okay. The computing time is fast and simple, like one second. And we are trying to generalize to uh, more dimensions. And uh, our motivation is, uh, uh, by the last slide, uh, 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 so our idea is to make ro underwater robots, uh, what we do in rest. And it's more a boy, a boy, a boy is not necessarily at the top of the surface of the water, but it can move, it can move uh, at different depths, but the propeller are very poor, so it can move only so we, and we, are, we have to, to do some kind of mission during this summer to go around Wessant, an island near west. So we have to visit different zones, and we have to find a trajectory where we have to put the robot so that he will visit uh, one region and then the region and so on. So that's our motivation is to move with currents and only to use the propellers of the robot in order to have the regulation around some trajectories. But uh, so it is our motivation. Okay. So thank you for your uh, for, for your attention. Yes. You say that uh, uh, this line to extend yes. to uh, higher dimension. Uh, there are some difficulties uh, except the time computation or no. the concept of walls, or maze, uh, in the, in the, in the time computation. Uh, so, no, 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 there, there is no, no, no theoretical problems. So, everything that has been explained with respect to mazes. <coughs> doors and so on can be extended to more dimensions. But now we have we, we have to, to show to prove it. We have to prove with uh, some softwares and uh, dealing with some examples to show that it is also possible to have this kind of uh, picture uh, in three dimension. Okay. Uh, so we have uh, Exactly. <laughs> I think in uh, so theoretically we can go to more dimension, but uh, as all branch and bound algorithm, as soon as you bisect, you will uh, generate many boxes. So the algorithm is clearly exponential with a number with a dimension of the state space. But when we even if the domain of viability uh, theory, I think if we can reach three or four. It's already a very good result. So uh, we, we work with currents. The robots move in a three-dimensional space. So even dimension three could. could. Yeah, because it corresponds to true uh, to true applications. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Actual situation. Yes. So to be yeah. able to. Yes. Well, it's, uh, it's, 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 how do you compute where the doors should go? How the doors? Yeah. How do you compute where the doors are? Uh, at the beginning, I don't know. All doors are uh, when I start with box. Uh, oh, I will make it right there. Oh, excuse, uh, excuse me. Okay. At the beginning, uh, I have a big box, and all doors are open. But after bisection. Uh, I will have a box which is like this, and the vector field is something like this inside. So I represent it by a cone. 
due to the cone, if I have a door which was open like this here, I can contract to empty because the no trajectory will be able to go from the right to the left. So first, I have a first contraction. And then I will close or open the doors with respect to the neighbors. But at the beginning, everything is totally open. Yes? Uh, your system is an autonomous system. Yes. So it is possible to have some controls input. Yes, to yes, to yes. Let the chain is Yes, yes, yes. So if you if we compare to the previous talk, in the previous talk, the problem was something like this. So control system. And here what I presented is the system without control. <coughs> so invoice which are represented, which I give in this speech, becomes in this situation viability sets. So of course what we are doing at the moment is to use this kind of algorithm to compute viability curve. And uh, we, we have done this. We have done this. Not published yet, but soon. Yes. Uh, so, what, what, uh, so uh, as, as explained, what I mean first, uh, I start with a set X, I guess, and I have a control system, and I try to find the uh, all point, so the viability kernel was noted previously as gamma of X, it's a set of, of all points such that if I do the right control, I can stay inside forever. Here I can do what I want. I will one day I will leave the text. So this can be computed by an outer approximation of the viability curve. Yes. But uh, it was not this tool. Yeah. More related to, to the previous one. But uh, you can use the same kind of tools. It's a, it's a kind of uh, control of a guard system. Yes, exactly. So, comments, questions? Maze algorithm factor. You talked about the doors and so on. Yes. It is clear on the concept that you do not uh, compute the trajectories. Yes. But I was wondering the fact that you, you consider cones, in a way, you it's kind of pick up of iteration or, or implicitly you're, you're doing kind of integration, aren't you? No? There is some relation. I mean, it's a, a kind of worst case. Uh, it's a worst case over approximation of yeah. the flow. Okay, so I, I think that using, in the, using guaranteed uh, uh, combining bases with guaranteed integration, you could be go yeah. much faster. Yeah, because you would have a, a uh, more efficient. <coughs> and for academical reason, we decide to stay uh, to separate uh, purely on it and not to combine all of them because uh, it's less clear in the academic point of view. But I think to be efficient, we, we should combine both. Ah, uh, for the boys. So the boys, uh, we have uh, uh, we have two propellers. So the boys are like this. Uh, it's like tubes. Yes. And uh, we have uh, one propeller here. And also on the other side, another propeller, so they can move. Uh, they can move in all direction. And then we have two ballast. One ballast system when you are uh, when you are deep, so it's a small one just to, to change the buoyancy. And another one just because when we are at the surface, we need to go out of the water from the water here in order to be able to communicate. So we can say that we have four propellers, uh, four actors, two propellers, and two bats. But one is only for communication. So three actors. Okay. 
Let's uh, thank you guys. <laughs>